everyone and welcome to the show. There's a pretty epic thunderstorm going on right now, so if you guys hear some weird rumbling noise in the background, know that that's why. Uh, also, if you hear me go, oh shit, it's because my cat has lost her shit. Um, she does not enjoy thunderstorms anywhere close to the extent that I do. This There's a bit of a story behind this particular face-up, so you may have seen this head before uh, if you are a long time watcher of my videos. Um, I've done some interesting things on it just purely because I really didn't have a concept for this head. Because uh, the concept that I did have for them initially just really didn't work out. Um, and with this face up what happened was I had an idea for a a themed doll that I wanted to, to do uh, and a sort of bit of a modding project as well and I was thinking okay well I need to get a head for this for this project and sort of go from there and then I remembered that I had a floating head that didn't have like didn't have a a character or a purpose um, and thought well okay let's try out that theme on this head and see whether it works because if it does then that's a less money for me to have to spend but B also um, it means that sort of another one of my floating heads is now given purpose. Uh, as you can see, uh, sort of came into the middle on this particular face up, and this is right around the time too where all of my footage got really, really out of order. So hopefully, all of these clips are in order, but if they're not, I apologize now, uh, I did my best, it's sometimes a little hard to tell, in part because I'm not always great at staying in camera still, in focus, um, but in part as well because in some of the clips, like, not much changes, so sort of it's, it's, it's a bit hard to tell, okay, how many layers of orange pigment have I laid down? at this point for this particular head and while I was doing this head I'd also been working on a couple other things uh, so <laughs> here they are making an appearance that's the tongue of one of my dolls I struggled with that watch the face up video for the doll that that tongue belongs to to hear a little bit more about that particular struggle uh, the biggest thing with this guy was I knew that I wanted to do a certain colour palette for this concept and for this doll and that was really to work within oranges and blues because I really love uh, bright contrasting colours but I feel like I've shied away from orange as a colour a lot and maybe more so than I should. Like, I tend to shy away from some of the the sort of family of reds and oranges and yellows just because they've never really been the colours that feel like me. Uh, but at the same time, I don't like limiting myself like that, sort of artistically, and I think I think sort of it's something I need to, to get more used to and get more comfortable with um, because you know that's a that's a fairly good chunk of the colour wheel that I've kind of excluded myself from for, for really no real reason. Like they're, they're fine colours you've just got to use them right and especially in dolls uh, being a bit careful with your yellows you know you don't want to make a doll look more yellow than it is. Um, even though that's not really one of my main concerns with my dolls normally um, because I just accept 
this fact of life. Um, this is one of those face-ups I did have a bit of trouble with because my concept was uh, pretty vague um, and I sort of just, I knew I wanted to do certain things but I wasn't sure how I wanted to th do them or how I wanted to execute that. Um, and then some of it obviously, sort of as you can see, involves paintwork. Um, something I've been thinking about, so I currently do the kind of dotting that I do. I use um, a um, just a paintbrush and some paint. Um, but I have a little sort of tool that is similar to a dotting tool that I think was like originally sold for sculpting. Uh, I don't remember. I bought it at a craft show. Um, that I think I might try and use the next time that I do uh, that kind of little dotting because I'd love to get them sort of to be more actual proper dots rather than sometimes the occasional smear when my hand decides to have a bit of a twitch. <laughs> and naturally of course you know you're only ever going to have a muscle spasm when you've got sort of a brush dipped in white paint at the ready, sort of applying it to a doll. So you can see I'm doing a lot of uh, cleaning up here with some sort of Q-tips. Uh, I think they're sold for makeup originally, but I find them really useful for doll face-ups because one end is flat and one end is quite pointed. Uh, and with a little bit of water on them, um, I find that they're really useful for clearing out paint. Now, I wanted to show you guys a little bit about how I spray, because uh, I use an airbrush sealant. So that was my mask, just floating into frame. I need to replace my filters uh, right now, um, because I can smell stuff through them. So I just use... Uh, Valero, I think it's Valigio, I don't know how you pronounce it, no idea, um, but I buy it from an English shop online. It's so much better than Liquitex, which is what I used before, because you just, it's designed for an airbrush, you just put it straight into the airbrush and then you go, uh, and that is amazing to me. Uh, my airbrush itself is just some cheapy airbrush that I bought off eBay, um, because while I'm sure it would be more economically sensible to buy like an expensive airbrush because it probably lasts longer. I just, it's, the saving up for things initially is always a bit of a trouble with me. So what I do to clean it out, I rinse it, rinse it sort of out with water and spray that through with some stop starts and then I've got a sort of bristly brush that I use to sort of clean out the nozzle area. And sometimes if I'm feeling like it, I'll spray a bit of water into there while air's coming out or then put air out. Just sort of really just doing whatever seems to work. I have no idea if it actually works. It's just worked for me this far, so. <laughs> and then back to the actual face up. So there's a toothpick picking bits out of bits of dust and, and shit out of the sealant, uh, which is the bane of my existence because I live in a fairly dusty environment. My, my ceiling is the kind of ceiling that just rains dust upon all things and not great for my allergies either, but you know, I love my apartment so I can live with my dusty ceiling. Um, but yeah, it does does mean that sort of sometimes I've got to pick a bit of dust out of my ceiling or sometimes I just incorporate it in as like, oh, now they have a freckle. That was completely intentional. Oh, they've got a mole now. I promise I meant to do that. Um. <sighs> the one problem I do have with making my videos longer is that I have no idea how to keep narrating them for that long and like also like does anyone want to actually hear my voice for 20 minutes or would you rather just watch the footage and listen to music um 
<laughs> Another thing I was trying to do with this face up, with the mouth, was I wanted to get this really uh, multicoloured look that I'd actually originally sort of done for one of my dolls. Um, I can't remember which off the top of my head, but I'd had to wipe that face up because um, it just did not work out. Like it was sort of one of the ones where stuff just started smearing and then trying to fix it, I kind of made it worse and then everything just piled on. It was like, okay, well, got to start from the start. But I still really liked how that lip looked. Uh, so I wanted to try and replicate that a bit, see if I can make that same technique work. Uh, and this sculpt was good for that as well because uh, it has a pretty uh, defined mouth. So there's a fair amount of space to work with uh, when experimenting with techniques and colours for lips. Um, it's probably not most people's jam, to be honest, the blue and purple lip, uh, but it's mine, so. <laughs> but I think the mouth took me longer than anything else on this face up because I was so determined to get those, those colours in place <laughs> and so determined to still have that kind of barrier between the colours where they're distinct but also sort of merge into each other and do it all without overdrawing the mouth too much and without having too much fallout in the surrounding area because to be honest that is the bane of my existence the fallout around mouths. I'm not, I don't like it and it one of those things that I just try to avoid as much as I can it's a bit harder when dolls have really deep like mouth corners because the pastel just gets in there and no matter what I do I can't get the darn stuff out um, but so that's I'm sure that's practice at the end of the day um, just gotta keep at it keep practicing my poor kitty cat is so scared of this storm. I've got her in my lap and she's just like folded in half, head down, like she doesn't even want to look up for scritches. But better sort of having her calm, at least I know that she's breathing sort of pretty normally than having her race around the apartment every time a sort of clap of thunder goes. I really like uh, storms, I wish we would have more of them. I like the atmosphere that they provide, um, and I mean, I grew up in a drought, so anytime there's rain, it's just this magical thing to me. So that was that sort of one of the, the progress shots, um, but sort of yeah, I, I live in an area that's meant to have more storms, but sort of the last year or so, um, we just didn't get any storms. Like, they all just died down before they got to us. So I think, I think this is the first proper storm we've had in a while. And even so, I can tell it's sort of a bit calmer than our usual, uh, even. There was one day when I sort of I was talking to someone and they're like, oh yes, we've been forecast to have flash floods and we had all of like 30 seconds of rain because the storm cell just completely dissipated before it got to us. Um, sometimes I wear gloves when I do this, by the way, but I also sometimes run out of gloves and don't necessarily want to go to the shops just for gloves. And then I end up doing this without gloves. Um, but the sealant that I use is non-toxic. Uh, here I'm giving my airbrush a bit of a clean because it's not spraying the way I like like it to. So again, I'm sure there are proper ways to, to do things that are not the way that I do things. But it works for me. So the biggest thing though I find is just 
keeping track of all of the little bits and pieces um, and not dropping the needle on my foot um, because I've done that before. I also have dropped one of the cleaning tools on my foot um, and I still have the scars. <laughs> a sharp little thing great if you need to you know clean old sealant out of the you know the nozzle not great if you drop it right onto your foot I'm pretty good at like getting my feet out of the way if I'm standing and drop something but when I'm sort of sitting and drop something that's a whole nother story oh I gotta be honest, I really wanna go out into this storm right now. Like, it's still really humid here because it's still quite warm. And just the idea of like, going out into the rain is so appealing to me. And I'm like, I could go and get some chocolate milk and enjoy the storm, but I've got my baby and she's sort of semi-comfortable and secure where she is, so. I've got to think about her well-being first, because that's that's the sort of thing when you decide to be a pet owner, is you've got to put tiny fluffy baby's well-being first, before your desire for chocolate milk. <laughs> this was, this was nerve-wracking, um, using white paint to paint on fangs to the mouth. And I got the first one. And as is always the way when you have a pair of anything, the first one turned out beautifully. The second one, on the other hand, not quite so much. <laughs> Still, it looks pretty good, uh, or at least I think it looks pretty good, but then I'm also biased, so we haven't got to the bit yet where it just completely all got away from me and I'm not particularly impressed but at least not it's not particularly visible but I think we're getting there oh what, what oh yeah so here's the bit where I thought okay I'll do some eyebrows the problem with this sculpt though is that it just doesn't have anywhere for eyebrows to go like it's got a bit of a brow bridge but it's not particularly defined and I'd already really built the eyeshadow up and so I'm like, okay, let's do more dots. And then I started doing more dots. And then I kept doing more dots. And then it was too late and the paint was dry and I couldn't remove the dots. So I just kept going on the dots. <laughs> it's a bit of overkill in my opinion, but it's not super visible most of the time. And it definitely won't be that visible once I put a wig on them. So I figure I can live with the dots on the forehead because I'm happy with the rest of the face up. <laughs> it's like sometimes, sometimes things just get away from you. Sometimes in a way that's acceptable. Sometimes in a way that's really, really not. Uh, <laughs> luckily for me, this one was reasonably acceptable because I was really happy about the rest of the face up and I would have been pretty darn annoyed if I'd had to start again because <laughs> you know there's, there's some stuff that once you've got it right once that's it it's it's never gonna be that good again like you can never replicate it you know you, you're just stuck So there we go, that's a look, you can see the dots a little bit. I'm still not sure on the name, playing with Ganymede, but whatever. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!